utilized uh, is down. And again, we don't look at just day-to-day data. You look at the three-day trend, but that number is down. The three-day average trend is also down. Uh, Anecdotally, the individual hospitals, the larger systems are reporting that some of them are actually releasing more people than are coming in, so they're net down. So we see the quote-unquote flattening of the curve. Uh, we have more capacity in the hospital system than ever before. So we've had more capacity in that system to absorb more people. The sharing of equipment, which has been uh, really one of the beautiful, cooperative, generous acts among different partners in the healthcare system has worked. Uh, If the hospitalization rate keeps decreasing the way it is now, then the system should stabilize over these next couple of weeks, uh, which will minimize the need for overflow on the system that we have built in at Javits and at the uh, USNS uh, Comfort. So that is all good news. There's a big caution sign. That's if we continue doing what we're doing. If we continue doing what we're doing. We are flattening the curve because we are rigorous about social distancing, et cetera. So if we continue doing what we're doing, then we believe the curve will continue to flatten. Uh, But it's not a time to get complacent. It's not a time to do anything different than we, we have been doing. Remember what happened in Italy? when the entire health care system became overrun. So we have to remain diligent. We have to remain disciplined going forward. But there's no doubt that we are now bending the curve, and there's no doubt that we can't stop doing what we're doing. That's the good news. The bad news isn't just bad. The bad news is uh, actually terrible. Highest single-day death toll yet 779 people. Uh, When you look at the numbers on the death toll, it has been going steadily up, and it reached a new height um, yesterday. Wow, yesterday, 779. The number of deaths, as a matter of fact, the number of deaths will continue to rise as those hospitalized for a longer period of time pass away. The longer you are on a ventilator, the less likely you will come off the ventilator. Lord have mercy. Uh, Dr. Fauci spoke to me about this, and he he was uh, 100% right. The the quote-unquote lagging indicator between hospitalizations and deaths, the hospitalizations can start to drop. The deaths actually increase because the people who have been in the hospital for 11 days, 14 days, 17 days pass away. That's what we're seeing. Hospitalizations drop and uh, the death toll rises. I understand the science of it. I understand the facts and the logic of it. Uh, But it is still incredibly uh, difficult to uh, deal with. Every face, every number is a face, right? Uh, And that's been painfully obvious to me every day. But we have lost people, uh, many of them frontline workers, many of them healthcare workers, many of them uh, people who were doing the essential functions that we all needed for society to go on, and they were putting themselves at risk, and they knew they were. Many of them vulnerable people who this this vicious predator of a virus targeted from day one. This virus attacked the vulnerable and attacked the weak. And it's our job as a society to protect those vulnerable. And that's what this has always been about from day one. And it still is about be responsible not just for yourself but to protect the vulnerable be responsible because the life you risk may not be your own 
those people who work into an, walk into an emergency room every day and put themselves at peril, don't make their situation worse. Don't infect yourself or infect someone else so their situation becomes more dangerous. Just to put a perspective on this, 9-11, uh, which so many of us lived through mm -hmm. uh, in this state and in this nation, 2,753 lives lost. This crisis, we lost 6,268 New Yorkers. Have mercy. I'm going to direct all flags to be flown at half-mast uh, in honor of those who we have lost to this virus. That's right. Big question from everyone, from my daughters, I'm sure around most people's dinner table. Uh, when will things go back to the way they were? They won't. I don't think it's about going back. I don't think it's ever about going back. I think the question is always about going forward. And that's what we have to deal with here. It's about learning from what we've experienced, and it's about growing, and it's about moving forward. Well, when we will we return to normal? I don't think we return to normal. I don't think we return to yesterday, where we were. I think if we're smart, we achieve a new normal. Uh, the way we are understanding a new normal when it comes to the economy and a new normal when it comes to the environment, uh, now we understand the new normal in terms of uh, health and public health. Uh, and we have to learn just the way we've been learning about the new normal and other aspects of society. We have to learn what it means, global pandemic, how small the world has actually gotten. Mm -hmm. Someone sneezes in Asia today, you catch a cold tomorrow. Uh, whatever happens in any country on this globe can get on an airplane and be here literally overnight. And understanding this phenomenon and having a new appreciation for it, how our public health system uh, has to be prepared and the scale to which we need a public health system. Look at the way we're scrambling right now to make this work. Uh, we have to learn from that. I think we've also learned positive lessons. We've found ways to use technology that we never explored before. You have a New York State court system that, uh, thank you, Chief Judge, is basically developing a virtual online court system, uh, which has all sorts of positive benefits going forward, using technology for health care, using technology for work from home, using technology for education. I think these are all positives that we can learn. Testing capacity, which we still have to develop, that is going to be the bridge from where we are today to the new economy, in my opinion. Uh, it's going to be a, a testing informed transition to the new economy where people who have the antibodies, people who are negative, uh, people who have been exposed and now are better. Those are the people who can go to work and you know who they are because you can do testing. Uh, but that we've all developed uh, a sense of scale over the past few weeks in, in dealing with this. There's also lessons to be learned. Why are more African Americans and Latinos affected? You heard what he just We're said. We're seeing this around the country. African Americans. Now, the in New York are not as bad as the disparities disparities we see in other places across the country, but there still are apparently disparities. Why? Exactly. Uh, well, comorbidity, I understand that, but I think there's something more to it. You know, it always seems that the poorest people pay the highest price. Wow. Why is that? Because it is what it is. Why is that? It is what it is. Whatever the situation is, natural disaster, Hurricane Katrina. The people standing on those rooftops were not rich white people. Uh-oh. Why? Why is it that the poorest people always pay the highest price? But let's figure it out. Because of let's the powers the that be. Let's do the research. <laughs> let's learn from this moment and let's learn these lessons and let's do it now. We're going to do more testing in... 
uh, minority communities, but not just testing for the virus. Let's actually get research and data that can inform us as to why are we having more people in minority communities, more people in certain neighborhoods, why do they have rate, higher rates of infection? I get the comorbidity. I get the underlying illness issue. But what else is at play? Are more public workers Latino and African American who don't have a choice, frankly, but to go out there every day and drive the bus and drive the train and show up for work and wind up subjecting themselves to, in this case, the virus, whereas many other people who had the option just absented themselves. They live in more dense communities, more urban environments. But what is it? And let's learn from that, and let's do it now. I'm going to ask our SUNY Albany chief, Dr. Javidan Rodriguez, to head an effort to do it right now. We'll do more testing in minority communities now with more data research done now. So let's learn now. Department of Health will be doing it along with Northwell. But let's learn these lessons now. We're also... See, did you just hear what he said? African-American and Latino communities in New York, the state of New York, is being hit hard by this COVID-19. So y'all can say, and he even used the word disparity. See, some of y'all think this is a game, but it's not. You need to build up your immune system. He also used the word vulnerable and weak as far as the populations. That means you need to be boosting your immune system. You need to be eating fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. You need to be staying away from dairy. You need to be staying away. Stay away from dairy. Stay away from meat. You know, conduct personal hygiene. You know, you got something going on. You may have some phlegm or whatever. Then you need to gargle with hot, salty water. Get you some mouthwash. Get that act and that Listerine going. And that scope. Make sure you're wiping down, you know, high-touch areas, all them surfaces. Make sure you're washing your clothes. You need to be washing your washcloths, washing, you know, your dish rags that, that you use to wash them dishes. Wiping down doorknobs, all that stuff. So that's 779, just to confirm, or should I say clarify, what Governor Cuomo from New York was saying. So there there was a little, um, there was a uh, visual aid here, and it had 779, which was the highest peak for pretty much the past uh, six or seven days. So yesterday was a really bad peak for New York. And who knows what the number will be, you know, for today, you know, before before this day is over. So I'm telling you, I'm not recording this to get people afraid. There's some people out there who still thinks this is a joke. It's not a joke. Uh, Governor Cuomo, he just said that social distancing, that, that the numbers are actually starting to flatten, meaning to plateau. And it can continue to it can it can continue to do that or go up and back down based upon what we do. So I'm not fear mongering. This is serious. I never thought I would see this in my lifetime.
but it is what it is. It's here now. And it really doesn't matter how or where it started from. It's here. People are dying. And you also noticed he said the longer people stay on a ventilator, the less likely they are to survive. So pretty much once that that person gets the ventilator status, only by the grace of the most high, they're probably possibly not going to make it. Um, I only recorded part of the press conference. Um, the press started, the prep, excuse me, the press conference started about 1235 Eastern Standard Time. Because um, I'm in Central Standard Time, I'm in Kentucky, and he's on Eastern Standard Time. Um, I will say, I've been playing around with different therapies, and I will say this. While we still have FedEx and the USPS, you guys need to get... um, You guys need to look into magnetic therapy. You do. You need to look into magnetic therapy. Um, Because I actually just started magnetic therapy about two days ago. And it's working. It really is working. Look for, if you go on eBay or anything eBay, this is where I got mine from, or Amazon. Look for quantum science. Just type that in. And there should be some magnetic necklaces that come up. Mine particularly comes from Japan. Shout out to Japan. You guys be doing it. Y'all be grinding over there. But I highly recommend that you do look into magnetic therapy and I pray that you all have a good day you know we made it through a miracle Monday we made it through a transformation Tuesday and now we are in worthy Wednesday so you know tomorrow's testimony time Thursday and then we got funny Friday and then well (laughs) I ain't thought of a name for Saturday and Sunday yet, but it is what it is. You know, I will say this, practice self-care, you know, you know, get away from technology, turn off your phone, turn off your television, sit and just Listen to yourself, breathe, or go outside, take a walk. Of course, practice social distancing. Sit on your porch, do, you know. Don't let anxiety and fear consume you today. I played that because I wanted you to hear the good and the bad. Not here to make people afraid. There's enough fear and anxiety running around out there. That's not what this is about. I'm not about that. I don't co-sign on none of that. But for the people who are thinking that this is a joke, it's not a joke. This is real. Um, whether people are dying from their pre-existing from their pre-existing condition before the virus gets them, it doesn't matter. People are leaving here, n- nonetheless. So practice self-care. Hey, listen to music, draw, art therapy, music therapy, go out and go for a hike, you know, forest therapy, even do aromatherapy. Sometimes, you know, I'll get caught up in something and then I'll reach and I'll go and I'll take a, a whiff of cinnamon or frankincense. Or I might take a whiff of some peppermint just so that I can keep my mind in the present and not worry. You know, got enough people leaving here. 
rest in peace to the bus driver, you know, in Detroit, Michigan, you know, that that really is a shame. Got somebody in their 50s coughing, not covering their mouth, and then that happens. Shame. You know, I really think that that person should be charged with accessory to murder. Because, I mean, it just, it just, it's just, just ignorant, just, just negligent, gross negligence. Yep, I said it, gross negligence. And y'all who, who are operating like that, just stop it. But anyway, peace, love, and light to all the people out there. Connect with a higher power today. If you are having thoughts of suicide with a plan, you need to talk to somebody. I encourage you and urge you to talk to somebody. I know things aren't looking too good right now, but there is another way that is not just the only way. And again, I hope you have a good day. I know I usually don't do this on the fly, but hey, he was live and I said, hey, why not record him? See what's going on, what the numbers were looking like. So, peace, love, and light, beautiful people, and have a blessed day. I'm gone.